stop getting married? What are they afraid of? And then what about pornography? Pornography is a neurotoxin. Who's pushing the pornography down your throat? Who created the pornography revolution in America? Is it liberation to have pornography available in every home, on every computer, on every iPhone? Or is it a form of imprisonment? And what does your government have to do with the pornographing of America? Where it's everywhere. This filth is in everyone's home. Children have pornography on their iPhones. Who is letting this happen? Who is behind this dark secret? Who is behind this hidden side of pornography? Who is doing this? So is it internet pornography? What is it about? Why is the white male the one with the least number of replacement children of all races? Why? What's going on? How is it happening? There are races that have no problem with getting married and having many children. Obama's bringing them as fast as he can. That's just a fact. And the greatest defense of truth, by the way, the greatest defense against uh, any kind of slander against me is the truth. If what I've said is not true, I wouldn't say it, by the way. So why are you not getting married? What's the matter with you guys? What's the matter with you guys? What are you afraid of? Young men, why are you afraid to get married? Why are you afraid to have children? Now, I got to tell you something. Everyone knows this. Raising a child is perhaps the hardest job you could ever do. Everyone knows that. And you have to understand what family really is. You don't really know what your family is until you, well, until you don't have them. That's something that people who have a family understand. And those young guys out there who are listening to me, who think that it's too tough to marry a woman and to have children and it's better to just have fun and sow your seeds and this and that, you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. The only thing to remember is this, young men, listen to me, because I've said it to guys and I see their eyes light up. You know what I say to them? I say to him, if it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. And suddenly a bell goes off in their head. See, most guys don't understand that. I say to him, if it wasn't for your mother, you wouldn't be here. You say, what's the revelation? Well, it's quite a revelation, the guys who were given to hedonism. And they have to understand that as they get older, what are they going to have to show for what they've done with their wild oats? Nothing. Nothing. Them in an apartment, that's it. More parties. Your hair is falling out. You get the hair plugs and you're still running after girls. That's an exciting life for you. No children, no son, no daughter, nothing, no continuum in life. I'm not saying if you don't have children, you're not a person. Don't get me wrong. There are many fine people who choose not to have children. That's not my point. The predominant majority of people should have families in this country. The good people, the smart people, the good genes. And, you know, I've said this over and over again to gay people over the years. And the smart ones get it. I said one of the reasons America is suffering right now is because some of the smartest, most talented people in the country are not having children. They're politically active, but they're not having children. And so they, they get the message. I mean, that's one of the reasons we're suffering. It's the hedonism. It's the drug, sex, and rock and roll. Could you imagine if I'm still on the radio in 10 years? Or worse yet to the liberal, what if I'm not just on the radio? with the, the, I did the Newsmax TV, and everyone says, my God, are you photogenic, blah, blah, blah. Do I don't want to do TV. But my message is so important, I'll probably keep writing. I don't know what's going to happen, truthfully. You know, the world is in such a state of uh, crisis right now. Nobody knows what's coming tomorrow. And I was thinking about my own life, looking back and the life of a nation, how much of it is based on chance how many seminal things have happened to me in my life as a result of chance not planning right the best laid plans of mice and men and all that you plan you you make a a, a path for yourself you go down a certain road and usually things that really change the course of your life tell me if I'm wrong have occurred by chance or well, let's say equally an equal number of things come to your life by chance that changed the course of your life, right? But I don't want to go down that road right now. And I didn't mean to get too preachy. I didn't want to go into the sexual area. I just wanted to stick to the high road of what family means. That's It's that simple. And I guess it goes back to my digression a little earlier of how has chance affected your life? 
and can chance affect America's uh, you know future history? Can chance intervene right now? Look at what happened to us when so many good people thought that Barack Obama was an honest, caring, America-loving man. Look how you were hoodwinked. Many of you voted for him because you said anyone but Bush. You wanted nothing to do with war. That's a good sentiment. Nobody wants war. Only a fool wants war. But the fact is, he lied to you. He lied to you. He's a Machiavellian, self-interested individual, period. Surrounded by the worst people America's ever had inflicted upon it. So look what chance did to this country. You took a chance on Barack Obama. You know you were lied to. What, now you want to take a chance on Hillary Clinton when you already know who she is? Many of you don't like Hillary Clinton. I've met liberals who say, you know, I really don't like her. I actually hate her. But I'll never vote for a Republican. Well, that really makes sense. That really makes sense. That makes as much sense as my relatives who's, whose grandfather landed in New York City like my grandfather did and never changed their politics from when the time they were socialists off the boat from Russia. They can't evolve. They can't grow. What's the matter? Someone's going to say, oh, you voted for a Republican? What's going to happen? You're going to be ostracized from the Mahjong game? You'll be thrown out of B'nai B'rith? I mean, what's going to happen if you vote a Republican? It's called a secret ballot. I don't understand how people get stuck in the past like this. I don't understand it. They take a look around and they see the devastation that has been wrought by this administration. All right, I made my point. Things happen by chance, and like, let's talk about the nation. No matter what they plan for us, there's always a chance that, that it won't work out for Obama. It won't work out for the uh, New World Order psychos. There's always something coming out of the side mirror that you don't expect. Did Obama actually expect... Putin, Putin to start bombing ISIS? No. The sorority told him that they had Putin boxed. They were destroying the ruble, running his economy off the ground. Uh, that'll teach him for meddling in Ukraine. We'll do what we want. We got him beat. Don't worry, Mr. Obama. We got him. We got him. We got him. And all of a sudden, he's starting to bomb in Syria. What happens? All the pink ties come out of Washington and start to mumble and do the mumbo jumbo. And Putin does the right thing. He starts to destroy ISIS. So what does Barry do? He launches a, a, a Green Beret raid, not to rescue Americans, by the way, because so far as I know, there are no American hostages. Who does he try to rescue? No Christians, by the way. Who did Obama waste a Green Beret on? Whose life was lost? To rescue some Iraqi soldiers. That's who. Now, you think about that one. Think about that, that one, that little very, very public display of his commander-in-chiefing last week. So a very brave American uh, Green Beret dies. Did you see the helmet cam of that one? Wow. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The topic is a pretty good one, which is young men, why are you afraid to get married? What's the answer? Now, there is an article on my website, michaelsavage.com. It's a news article, and the headline says, Strategic Engineered Migration as a Weapon of War. Strategic Engineered Migration as a Weapon of War. Now, you pretty much know what I'm talking about. It comes from the Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs, out of the John F. Kennedy School of Government, which is a liberal government, a liberal organization, even they recognize that the refugees, so-called, that are invading Europe are a weapon of war. A new and different armament using refugees as weapons has entered the world's arsenals. Many of you are absolutely ignorant to what this actually means. Europe is being overrun by Muslims, mainly young men of military age, and the weakling coward liberals running Europe are bending over backwards to accommodate them. It's gotten so bad that in Sweden, a lesbian priest, which is a joke to begin with, a lesbian priest has ordered that the cross and all crosses be removed from the church and that the pews be removed so that the church can be turned into a mosque for the Muslims who have been brought into her town. If this is not cultural suicide, I'd like to know what is. And so I'm not saying that you can do anything about it. All I'm going to say is you can do something about it in your own life. This is not a call to revolution. 
I'm not asking you to march on Washington with a pitchfork in your hand. That's not going to change a darn thing. The only thing you can change is your own life. That's all I'm saying to you. There's another thing you have to know about all of this. Many, many years ago, when I consulted with religious people, uh, I asked them how their arranged marriages work out. I asked them many times, how could you marry someone that you don't even love? And wise, older men said, well, you learn to love the person you're living with. See, it's the reversal of the United States of America. Guys want to walk into a bar and meet someone they think is meant for them for life. Well, how does that normally work out? So you can do it the other way, which is have someone picked for you in an arranged marriage, for example, if you're in a very religious community, and you learn to love each other by living with each other, by learning to respect each other. That's what he said to me. But I want to get back to talk radio, because this is just talk radio. We have no power, no influence. Uh, in the middle of the night, last night at 3 in the morning, that sour, horrible-looking man with a gullet hanging down from his neck, the number one leading Democrat in Congress, Mitch McConnell, stabbed America in the back and ran a budget deal by everyone at 3 o'clock in the morning. This is something that is done in, used to be done in banana republics. They wouldn't even try it in Ecuador today. What's going on in the United States under this most corrupt president in American history, he has so corrupted everybody that even the Republican Party has become more corrupted than it already was. He has done something to this country that you can't even touch. The man is a living virus. Four o'clock in the morning, they pass a budget. And they give this shyster an $80 billion budget so he can spend it around on illegal voters pay off fakers in San Francisco with fake solar plants in the middle of the Nevada desert. Look into those grants and contracts. See who got billions of dollars in money from your pocket. And see who's connected to senators and congressmen with fake solar plants. But that's a little side note. We can't change the corruption. It's so endemic right now that it's hard to know how to stop it short of a pure revolution, which is something I am not calling for. We've tried the ballot box. Did it work? Did the ballot box work when we voted? No, it got worse. So what's next? Tell me what's next. We have one election left.